Okay, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is your host TKK here and uh, we are doing another tournament replay video and this time we are taking a look and analyzing my UU Majors matches uh, from for round one uh, that happened this week. So UU is a tier that I do enjoy a lot. It's a tier that I used to play a lot. Um, I stopped playing it because I just became more enamored with LC, with PU, and U. Uh, those three are definitely the tiers that I enjoy the most and had um, the most fun playing. Uh, but UU is also like a very close second or contender <laughs> in terms of uh, a tier that I enjoy. It has a lot of really cool mons. The metagame has been a little unstable. I think that's the reason I haven't enjoyed it as much ever since the drops that happened like three months ago. Uh, when they dropped like a bunch of stuff in, it just became crazy. And uh, it's just been really unsteady since then. But uh, I decided to sign up for the tournament, thought it would be fun. And uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it, team preview. So my team is pretty uh, pretty standard looking. Mammos, uh, Mamoswine, Zarude, uh, which is heavy duty boots, Mamoswine, Life Orb, Slowpoke, uh, sorry, Slow King, uh, Boots, Future Sight Scald, Celesteela is uh, also pretty standard. Uh, the only two Pokemon that are a little uh, different are Slazzle, you know, and Enumon. Uh, pretty cool Pokemon altogether. It does have a lot of nice utility moves uh, and a good stab combination and knockoff, so you can't really go wrong with that. And then Cabalion, which apparently, as far as I understand, has been kind of working its way up in terms of viability in UU, even though I think it's an RU Mon. It's a pretty good rocker, it's a good pivot, and uh, has a really good speed tier, right? It's hitting, I think, 346 speed, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so very, very fast, uh, just under base 110. So. Yeah, that's the team. Uh, I'm facing off against my opponent, Skimmy the God. I think I've heard uh, their name here or there, maybe PU World Cup, other World Cups. But So I know they're a pretty competent player. I'm expecting it to be a pretty good set of games. And the first game we're playing is against Trick Room, which I don't like. Trick Room is scary. Trick Room is very, very scary. Uh, fortunately for me, my Slowpoke, or sorry, my Slow King is very slow, um, which works in my favor pretty well as it's... Uh, I think it's somewhere around like 50, 60 speed or something uh, for some reason. I think maybe as an anti-trick room measure, uh, it's a little bit, I think it's like a little bit slower and has like lower speed IVs, uh, which works out really well because it actually means I are much slower than most of these Pokemon in trick room, most importantly being Marowak Alola. This thing is a huge threat. The other trick room sweepers don't look that threatening. It's really just the Marowak Alola that has the potential just to 6-0 my entire team. Uh, with Flare Blitz plus Polter, Flare Blitz, Flare Blitz, Polter, Flare Blitz, right? Doesn't, <laughs> I don't really have a great switch into this, so I have to play smart around it. Uh, maybe <laughs> get a little luck in my favor as well. So I'm going to lead off with um, Salazzle because I'm expecting maybe P2 lead, and if P2 leads off, I can knock it off, and then I can Encore it, which is what I really want to do. I want to Encore it into Trick Room, Um and I want my opponent to be afraid of that and like maybe switch around, just put my opponent in a weird, uh, in a weird spot, you know, altogether. Because they're pro they might be expecting encore, they might not want to. If they trick room, they'll like switch out of there, or uh, and then I can like get another knock or something along those lines. So I thought it'd just be a good lead altogether. And uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, if I was my opponent, I would expect maybe Porygon lead, uh, Mesprit. Uh, I think is what they end up leading with, um, which makes sense as well to pressure uh, my Pokemon. So this is kind of a tough lead for me as we're gonna see. So I'm gonna go hard into Zarude as my opponent actually encores me. I'm not sure what they were trying to encore me into, if it was toxic or or something. So I'm just gonna switch out of there into Zarude and I can very comfortably fire off a Darkest Lariat. It does reveal to be Col Berry and it's gonna set up the Trick Room, but I was like, okay, you know what? That's fine. I can U-turn out of here uh, pretty comfortably as my opponent does go for Stealth Rock. That's fine. I don't have removal on this team, so I'm fine with playing with the rocks up. And I'm just going to go into my Cabalion to set up my own rocks. Because, like, you know what? Rocks are going to go a long way in keeping that Marowak at least somewhat limited. Keeping Gyarados limited. Um, getting Chip on the Conk. Because Rocks plus Burn is going to keep that thing low. And, of course, Porygon uh, will be good. So... There is a Healing Wish in the air. Healing Wish does save in this generation. I did not know that for the longest time. So I have to be aware of that. It doesn't activate here. So Healing Wish is still active as Marowak comes in. And my opponent is going to reveal Substitute. And I was like, oh god, this is not good. Fortunately, I'm slower. So Slowking can break the sub. Uh, but that's about it. So I'm going to Scald here. And I get very lucky as my opponent actually misses uh, Poltergeist. And now I'm like, okay, now we're in business. Now we're in business. Now that I know this thing is sub, I can avoid 
losing to it. So I'm going to double into Cabalion here because I'm like, no one is ever going to let me, well, excuse me, I, well, I let me take that back for a second. I double into Cabal. I switch out of here because I am out of Trick Room and now my opponent is faster than me. I uh, misspoke. I'm going to go to Cabalion to eat the Polter. I was thinking of going Zarud. Um... And then like scaring it out after, but it would have been such a risk if my opponent just went for a fire type move um, that I didn't want to risk it. And Cabalion's already kind of done its purpose. It's set up rocks. It's not going to really break past anything. Mock Punch from Conkeldur will knock it out. It's kind of set up food for Gera. I do have Volt Switch, so I guess I could scare it with that, but it's not uh, like that's pretty obvious, I think. I uh, can't really break through Crest or Pori. It doesn't really have any more utility. So I was like, let me just get rid of it, let it die, scare this thing out with a potential for Stone Edge, as that's exactly what's going to happen, and then Crest comes in, and I can Vol Switch out of here. So I'm still keeping in the back of my head that uh, the Healing Wish is in the air. So I have to play smarter around the Healing Wish, and that means I'm going to go into Slow King, because I know this thing is going to set up Trick Room, and I do not want to... Uh, I do not want this Marowak coming in. So I could have gone into something else like Zarud or Lazzle to try to knock it off, but I made a very conscious decision to go into Slow King because I don't want that Marowak coming in for free. So that's exactly why I made these plays, as I can very comfortably just fire off a Future Sight here and sack my Cabalion, which has a Rocky Helmet actually, so I'll be able to get a little bit of chip on the Conk as well. So that's that. I actually want to go up a turn. I... Oh yeah, I took rocks and then... Uh, sorry, I was just wondering why the Marowak is at 50. I forgot, I forgot that it's subbed. So, um, Konka's going to get chipped down by burn and rocks and uh, all of that. And I know that Celesteela, relatively, compared to the other rest of the Pokemon, should be able to take any one hit. So I can put up a Leech Seed here. And this is going to prevent Marowak from wanting to put uh put up a sub right so i'm playing uh i'm playing this game because i know marowak is the biggest threat to my team and healing wishes out of the picture so that's one thing that's one thing that's worth noting um but i'm playing this game so that way marowak just doesn't get a free switch in so as you can see here it's taking future sight plus leech seed uh plus i have protect um so this thing can't sub up anymore basically so uh, I think I'm in a pretty good spot here. My opponent now needs to fa force or like needs to waste another a healing wish or lunar dance, I guess, with Cresselia this time around. So I'm in a good spot. So Trick Room comes up again and again. I'm just gonna fire off the future site because I want a I want something in the air to prevent this Marowak from going insane. So I know Crest is coming in, I know it's gonna lunar dance, and I know it's gonna go into Marowak. That's completely fine. At this point, I'm still under Trick Room, so I can just scald and knock this thing out, and I'm gonna kill this. And at this point, I'm like, okay. I'm in a pretty good spot. I can't really lose to this thing. I'm just going to throw up a future site, or lose to my opponent. I'm just going to throw up a future site and then get the hell out of there, basically, because uh, future site for my slow king is still valuable. Um, Scald for my slow king, I guess, could be good. Dragon Dance from Gyarados uh, is pretty threatening, even at plus two. Um, if he does flinch here, we could be in a tough spot, but fortunately, uh, I, my opponent doesn't uh, doesn't flinch. I always have ice, be ice Shard in the back, too, so potentially I would just need to get a little bit of chip off but I don't think it would have been likely with anything else so I really did need this leech seed to go off and fortunately it does go through so I'm able to uh, protect here get a little bit of stalling happening but at this point uh, my opponent's gonna die to ice shard so Celesteela has kind of lost its use I'm just gonna go into slow king uh, try to pivot around this thing as best as I can and then go into Celesteela on the power whip and uh, come out of this relatively unscathed because of the miss so I mean, that would have done a decent chunk, but still not enough at plus three. And my opponent is just going to forfeit at that point, and that is going to be game one. So yeah, Polter, Polter, um, Polter, whatever you call it, uh, turn, uh, wow, I can't, I can't think. Polter miss very early in the game definitely saved me, but I think after that, um, I did get bailed, but I think I also played a lot cleaner after that, and I didn't let my opponent's biggest threat set up for free and i'm actually pretty happy with how i played that like usually uh, i kind of struggle with that like you know identifying the opponent's biggest threat and like what they can do to beat me and kind of thinking about what i can do to beat them um but trick room really forces you to think about your opponent's game plan way more than any other like strategy so uh I'm glad that I was at least able to identify there and like put myself uh, and use good positioning to prevent my opponent from, you know, trying to uh, sweep me with Marowak because that would be very, very bad for me. So I think we can uh, pause it there. That is game one and we can jump into game two and see if I can close it out 
uh, there, we're going to have a three game series. Okay, and here we have uh, we have game three here, and uh, or sorry, game two here. And I was testing this team before um, before playing, and I didn't. I liked it. I thought it was really cool. I thought it, I like. I love Gmol. I love Gmol. I think it is the coolest Pokemon ever. I actually use it in Monotype uh, round two, which if uh, will probably be uploaded later this week. So if you guys want to be on the lookout for that, you know, make sure to subscribe. But. Um, I've noticed when I was testing that this thing has a huge weakness to, uh, uh, what do you call it, opposing Zydog. Zydog with CB just goes insane on this team. So I was like, shoot, when I load into this, and when I load into a Zydog, I'm like, oh god, I don't like that. And my opponent has a, a Moongoose, meaning that my Zydog isn't that good against them. So it is kind of a tough matchup, definitely not in my favor, just because every time Zydog comes in, it gets a kill, more or less. It too, it KOs everything on my team. And uh, when my Zydog comes in, it doesn't have as much leeway considering a Moongus can come in. Um, so I, I can like double around it if I want to, but it's not like that easy of a play to make, right? So uh, that's definitely the biggest threat to my to my team. Um, other threats on the team, Thunderous is broken apparently, um, and I probably stand by that. A thing is insane. Uh, from my perspective, it looks really, really good. Um, obviously, uh, Zydog blocks it, and same goes for me. Because uh, there's their their thunders looks amazing as well, but my Zydog prevents it from just like thunderbolting away. The rest of the teams honestly look pretty uh, similar. We have bulky waters, a Cabalion, and a flying type. We have a Moltres. Uh, so uh, I'm really just worried about Zydog. So I'm trying to think of how I can pivot around that, uh, and I'm looking to see if I can win with my Zydog or maybe my G Molt in, in the late stages of the game. So I'm gonna lead off uh, with uh, Moltres Galar. And my reasoning behind that was, okay, if I was my opponent, uh, I would be scared of Zydog, right? So I was expecting them to lead off with, uh, with Amoongus, and that means my G Molt has a good matchup against that. And, and if my opponent decides to lead off with Zygarde, that's not the end, end of the world because I can like agility up and scare this thing out with like a Hurricane or something like that. So we are going to see the thousand arrows come out definitely you can see that thing is banded by that type of damage i do get my berserk activated my citrus berry activated and i can agility up and you know my opponent's not in the best position right here so i can very comfortably i think just go for a fiery wrath i think it kills at that range i could have gone for hurricane because i don't think my opponent was ever going to stay in there um but and maybe i should have as i'm going to go for hurricane this turn get a crit which is very fortunate, and then die to a Moonblast. Probably, maybe a little unnecessary, considering I have a Tentacruel, um, but that damage uh, was definitely valuable, as I can just go uh, pretty comfortably into my T Thunderous T, and just fire off a Psychic, and get good chip on the Moongus. That is amazing damage, and we are going to see the Eject Pack come out, and that is tough, right? This brings in the Zygarde, and now, as I said, I don't have a switch in. I don't literally just no switch into this, so I was like, you know what? Thunderous T can take one hit. Let me just take this as an opportunity to neutralize this threat. Even though Thunderous is hugely beneficial against my opponent, it is so good against my opponent, I just can't switch anything in. I'm going to take this hit, I'm going to knock this thing off, and uh, basically this thing becomes a lot less scary with its without its choice, man. It's still fast, but now you can see Slowking uh, is doing literally 30%. I mean, it's not like I have a great switch in, but at least like my slow king can take it decently well. Unfortunately, my opponent is going to toxic me. I knew it was coming out, but again, like what is my switch in? I don't have one, so I have to just accept the fact that toxic is coming out, and I can teleport out of there, bring in my own Zygarde, and just fire off a thousand arrows of my own and uh, pick up a kill there. So that's good because the Amoongus is low; it doesn't want to come in. Um, on it and I can force a kill so that works out really well for me now my opponent's gonna bring in a Moongus I'm gonna go into slow king as slow king is we'll be able to block the spore and fire off a future site so right off the bat I think I won the trade right my Zygarde is still a relatively large threat um, and his Zygarde is not anymore and my thunderous actually looks pretty solid obviously he, uh their own thunderous can block my volt switch and all that um but it's still threatening right psychic still does a good chunk to everything on the team especially with the prim being weakened so i'm in a pretty advantageous position and uh Slow King being toxic does suck a little bit, but Future Sight support is really, really beneficial, as you're going to see here. I can Future Sight up here. Um, I can go into Cabalion. 
uh, as my opponent is going to go for synthesis and I'm just going to throw up rocks. I was like, you know what, rocks are going to be beneficial. It's going to prevent that Primarina from like setting up. If it's at 4%, that means almost anything on my team can kill it um, versus if it's at 16% because Primarina is pretty bulky. Um, and I can start getting chip off on uh, like Moltres or Thunderous Tea or Amoongus. Um, if I, well, I can get chip on these if I knock them off, and I would just get chip on Amoongus automatically. So I didn't think my opponent would also stay in, considering that they have to take a future site after this. And if I had just gone for Stone Edge, like uh, this thing might have been dead or at least close. But it is what it is. I get my rocks up, which works out pretty well for me. And now I can go into Zygarde as my opponent is just going to synthesis up. I think this was probably a misplay. I could have uh, probably just gone into... Uh, Thunderous on this turn, knowing that Synthesis was going to come out there, and then I could just go for uh, Psychic um, and pick up a kill. So I think that was definitely a misplay on my part, going into Zygarde and doing 47%. I forgot my calcs. Um, I knew that Z I forgot that Zygarde, Amoongus is just a really good stop to this thing. I just kind of messed up with that. So opponent's going to Synthesis a couple times. I'm just going to accept the fact that this is uh, not a winning situation for me. Uh, I can future sight up here. Unfortunately, take a little bit too much damage because of Toxic and all those things, but you know that's just the way it goes. As I can go into Cabalion on another Seed Bomb, take it extremely comfortably. Now my opponent is probably going to want to switch out and go into like their own Cabalion uh, or something to take this Psychic type move. I was expecting I was expecting Prim, but I knew a double switch was coming out for sure. So I'm going to go into Thunderous to try to catch that as Cabalion comes in, takes a good chunk from that Future Sight as we see. And uh, I'm expecting rocks to go up here, so I'm just gonna go hard into Zygarde and uh, pretty much just pick up, uh, pick up a kill. Because after rocks, it's not like uh, Amoongus wants to take this hit, uh, which is great. So Zygarde still has a lot of value, because um, as we saw before, it's doing what 40, 47 after rocks. Sorry, 47 on the switch. So after rocks, that's a two-hit KO. So Thunderous T comes in. As you can see, I don't really have a great switch into Thunderous T. Um, my best option is Tentacruel or Cabalion. Maybe I should have gone Cabalion on this turn, but I was like, you know what? Damage on the Thunderous T is valuable. And even though the Choice Band is really, really nice on Zygarde, as it can kind of win me the game, I was confident that I could win the game without the Choice Band with a combination of Future Sight uh, plus Thunderous plus Tentacruel. So, because Tentacruel actually looks pretty decent. If I can get like a Scald Burn on Amoongus, um, then if I just get a rapid spin off at some point and I get basically what I was thinking is like if I if I get thunder if I get what do you call it thousand arrows chip on this thing it's gonna be extremely low then at some point if I can just rapid spin up um, I can outspeed the thunderous scald it I'll be able to scald and do like 50 or 60 percent to Moltres and I'll be able to get like I'm Cobalion's already weak and then if I get a burn on a Moongus then the combination of burn plus future sight plus psychic plus like thousand arrows or something even non banded thousand arrows like we'll be able to overwhelm this thing so i'm going to take this as an opportunity just to chip this thing down i don't have a switch in anyway because my cabalion's only slept one turn it's just going to allow this thunderous to volt switch out of there and just put me in a weird position so i was like you know what let me just get the damage i need right now if i take a knock i take a knock um and now i can double into thunderous as my opponent's going to definitely go into amoongus like I, I knew that was going to happen for sure and i'm like okay let me get the damage i need right now uh with psychic and that's exactly what we're going to see is now i can go back into zygarde i know zygarde can definitely do 30 percent with thousand arrows and that means i get another kill basically so maybe not the most optimal way of playing but it works out as my opponent is going to go into moltres here and this is where tentacruel comes into play tentacruel takes any one hit extremely comfortably even that hurricane which was quite <laughs> quite threatening i'm going to go for the rapid spin here get uh rid of the rocks which is good for me as scald is going to or as hurricane is going to connect twice in a row and i'm just going to go for scalds because i need i need a scald burn on this amoongus if i get a scald burn on this amoongus now future sight uh, becomes extremely free for my slow king. I, uh, Seed Bomb is going to do way less damage to me. Um, this thing becomes basically a non-issue. I can just continue to switch around between Cabalion and Slow King to regenerate back up, fire off future sites, and just kind of slowly chip away at my opponent's team. So I just need to get a Scald Burn. I have a couple tries to do it, as my opponent's going to definitely synthesis here, and that means I have, I think, one more try, basically. And I'm able to get it on this turn. Very fortunate for me, obviously. But I did have a couple tries, so like I'm not gonna say like it wasn't like super unlikely hacks that I got here. But you know, I did work in my favor. Um, as now I can just go for Sludge Bomb. I do get a crit there. It is 
lucky. I'm not gonna deny it. It definitely sped up this process, but I don't think I would have lost. I think all I needed was the uh, Scald Burn, because as we're gonna see, um, at this point, um, Thousand Arrows just wins, more or less. Uh, Thousand Arrows plus Low King just kind of wins. So um, I'm gonna Sludge Bomb again, pick up that kill. Uh, Scald is going to do a ton of damage to Moltres. This this crit did not matter whatsoever. You're going to see crit doesn't matter. It would done it would have done like 55, and that means Thousand Arrows just cleans up the game at this point. And uh, that is going to be game two, and I'm able to come away with the victory. So I definitely got lucky here uh, in this game, and I think I got a little lucky with a couple of my plays working out. Um, so I think definitely in uh, the next round, I need to play a little bit cleaner. Definitely need to play a lot, lot more, lot more cleaner. I think the next time around. But at the end of the day, a win is a win. Uh, even if it's not very clean, it's a good way to ease yourself back into the meta game. And I think uh, in round two, I'll do a little bit more preparation and actually try to come out with a uh, with a better victory altogether. But I think we can just leave it at that. I hope everyone enjoyed, and I will uh, catch you guys in the next one. If you like, if you guys did enjoy this, you know, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. We're so close to 200 subscribers. I would really appreciate it if you uh, continue to grow with me as, uh, as we keep uploading here. But I'll leave it at that. I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care. Bye.